Welcome back to the channel. Over the past few videos, we've worked on building out the steps of a data processing pipeline to process real analytical data from a shoebox mass spectrometer I was using in grad school that lacked a lot of this software. Eventually, we're going to put these all together in a way that we can deploy them using a tool like Streamlit to automate the processing and expedite this for other purposes like predicting whether we have gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria. In the first video of this series, we looked at data filtering. The second video, we looked at peak picking. And in this video, we're going to look at baseline correction. And when I say baseline correction, I mean, if we have a data set that looks like this, and here we have kind of some mass spec data, we have some peaks here, there, and then maybe we have a lot there. And so the baseline is kind of doing a few weird things where we can probably estimate that we have some wonky shape that we want to correct. And so we do this by estimating the baseline and then subtracting that signal, which then helps us to ensure that we're capturing the right pattern of the data or eliminate other artifacts from our data set. To do this, we can use the peak utilities library again. And so we've used this for peak picking. You can find the documentation here at peakutils.readthedocs.io. And if I go to the peak utils link, we see that the inputs are relatively limited. Here, we simply need Y, which is an array containing our data. Next, we will pass in arguments for the degree. If, we, if it matters, we can use max iteration and tolerance. These tend to have less of an impact, particularly for this data. And then it returns a NumPy array with the baseline amplitude for each original point in Y. So when we want to do the baseline correction, we will, set, we will subtract the array from this output from the original data and have our baseline corrected data. If we jump to the notebook, we will use NumPy, Seaborn, Matplotlib, and Pandas in the typical fashions. Notice here that I, when I first ran this, I had to install PQTils. I did that using the exclamation point. And so if you don't have it in your environment, you can run this shell command and it will actually run the terminal, install peak utils into your environment, and then you can import it using the usual syntax. And because it's already there, I would just comment it back. The data can be found at this path here. This again is some old data I have from Purdue, and then we'll generate the data frame. Next, I wanna plot the data so you can see what we're dealing with. From the region around 400 to 600 mass charge, the data looks relatively flat. However, when we get from 650 to 800, we have a large hump in the data, and this is the area we really wanna correct. And so I'm gonna show you how we can flatten our baseline and help us to build algorithms that can focus more on the primary patterns within the data. So the first thing I wanna do is compute the baseline. I'm going to make a new variable called BL. That'll be our baseline. And we're going to pass in the baseline method. And again, it takes in a Y parameter. In our case, it'll be DF dot E coli. And then the degree will be degree. Like I did in the peak picking video, I want to show you what the default parameters are and how we can look to see if we are fitting closer to an optimal fit or if we're far away. So here is the original. So the default degree is none. I'll also add this baseline array to the same plot. We'll do that by using sns.lineplot, passing in BL, and then just plotting that data. So if you notice when we plot this baseline, it plots between zero and 400. This is because it is only plotting the Y values. We haven't specified X, and so it defaults to the length of the array. To get around this, we will just pass in Y equals and x equals df.index to make sure that we are now plotting on the same scale. And you can see that these now align. However, th the fit for this is not super great, particularly in the four to 600 region. And it doesn't quite capture that baseline in the 650 to 800 region. And so let's start marching through. If we jump to a second degree fit, See, we have a very unsatisfactory fit as well. We have what looks mostly like a straight line fit from the low point of 400 M over Z to 800. And so I would say we need to increase our degree. For degree equals three, we have a, a better fit for the 650 to 800 range and not as good of a fit between four to 600. And so let's increase our degree again and see what we get. Okay, so with a higher degree polynomial, we're doing a much better job of fitting this region and not introducing too many artifacts as a function of this higher order polynomial. And so I would say this is probably a pretty good place to stop. 
But let's see what happens if you go a little bit higher. So with a higher order polynomial, we do a much better job of getting a flat baseline between four to 600 and capturing some of this curve in the 650 to 800 range. And so let's see what happens if we subtract this array from the Y data to get a baseline corrected mass spectrum. To do this, we simply just take our df.e coli and subtract BL from it. And rather than producing a separate variable, let's just make a line plot around this. So line plot, and this becomes our Y parameter. And then X will be df.index again. And this looks pretty good. Now you can see we have a very flat baseline. Let's improve the visibility of this by adding an alpha parameter. Let's set alpha equal to 0.2. And let's make the same update here. And now it's really clear that we have a really nice baseline. We do have some artifacts introduced towards the high end. And so perhaps we're gonna find the balance between maybe four or five. Let's see what six looks like. It may be six, um, knowing that we aren't gonna have a perfectly fat baseline, but if we do have a little bit of information to spare on the very high end, maybe some of these higher order degrees would do a decent job. And so the next thing we might wanna do is write a loop that would go through the entire folder of bacteria spectra and see if we can optimize now data filtering, so smoothing out the data, maybe peak picking and baseline correction, so we can actually build pipelines for this full data processing suite, or we can even build a Streamlit app that can take in multiple files, employ these processing steps, and output a clean compiled data set from which we can build a model from. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you wanna be notified when I publish the next video in this data processing series, subscribe to the channel. And if there's other things you wanna see, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.